Hello everyone, this is Margaret Bryant and I'm going to talk to you uh, about registering a copyright. Let's start out first with uh, here are some web addresses that will become very handy. The first one is copyright.gov and that is the location where you will register any of your copyrights as well as any other information that you want to find about uh, copyrights. Uh, the second address is uh, a uh, help page for registering your copyright. It's actually very detailed and very good, so you may want to hang on to that one. The third one is a video uh, showing you how to register your copyright. Um, I'm going to actually show you a few more steps besides that, but it is an excellent reference um, if you want to, if you have any questions about registering for your copyright. So when you are going to register your copyright, you are going to need three things. You will need the application, which you find on the copyright.gov website. You're going to need your credit card because they're going to charge you some money for this. And you're going to need what's called the deposit. Now, the deposit is, among other things, copies of all of the images that you want to register. And so uh, there are some requirements about uh, the deposit. Um, so, for example, all of the images have to be have been created in the same year. They have to have been created by the same person. They uh, have to be all either published or unpublished. You can't mix the two. Uh, when we talk about published versus unpublished, published is pretty much any time that it's out there for the general public. So yes, that would include your uh, web page. That would include any social media. So uh, if you want to register unpublished, um, then you would want to keep it off of social media and off your website for the time being. It's a little bit easier to register unpublished. That's why I've kind of gotten in the habit of it. And so that's what the deposit is. So anytime you hear me talk about that, that's what I'm talking about. So the first thing that we want to do is select our images. And uh, in selecting your images, remember, all created in the same year, all created by the same artist, either all published or all unpublished. And you do have a limitation. You can only register 750 images at one time. That's actually a relatively new requirement. They only started that a couple of years ago. So 750 images at one registration. Uh, you can register more images than that. You just cannot do it at one registration. You would have to do multiple registrations. So go through and select your images. And we're going to do this in Bridge because you want to resize them. And you want to resize them so that you are not passing along this gigantic file to the um, to the Copyright Office. And so we're going to start out with, we've selected all of our images here in Bridge. Then we are going to go to Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor. And that's how we are going to resize all of those images. So in Image Processor, we get a pop-up window. We're going to do Save in the same location. We're going to say the quality is 10. We're going to say resize to fit. We're going to do 800 pixels by 800 pixels. Now what that means is whatever the longest side is, that's going to be 800 pixels. So uh, don't feel that it's, you're going to end up with a with square because you're not going to end up with a square unless you started with a square. So it's just going to make 800 pixels the longest side. And then you're going to hit run and let computers do what they do best, which is very repetitive jobs. <laughs> and you are going to end up with this. You're going to end up with a file folder that's in with all the rest of your images, and it just says JPEG. And what's in this file folder are all of these images that have been resized. So don't mix them up. These are the regular sized images. These are the ones that have been resized um, for the, your registration. The next thing that you want to do is you want to be able to get a list of all the file names. There are any number of ways of doing that. Uh, the, the method varies on. Uh, Windows and um, Mac. Uh, and also, there are some that you can do in Bridge there. It depends upon the version of Bridge that you've got. And there's so many variables in there. I would suggest that you probably go to Mr. Google and find out what's the best way to get just a list of uh, all the file names in a particular file folder. And you're going to need that list as part of your registration. So once you've got that list, then it's a text file. And it's just a list. Kind of looks like this down here. 
and what you're going to do is you're going to import it into an Excel spreadsheet and so you're going to press next a couple of times and you, keep, you get another pop-up and then you can press finish and you end up with this and what it is is just an Excel spreadsheet that just has a long list of all the file names that you have like I said you have already gone to Mr. Google and figured out how to do it for your particular devices to figure out how to convert file names into a text list and then import that text list into Excel. It's not as much trouble as it sounds. So you've got this text list and uh, you're going to, maybe you have gotten this later, you may get this a little bit later. This is a spreadsheet that the Copyright Office requires and uh, you are going to be importing that or copy and pasting your numbers from your Excel spreadsheet into this particular spreadsheet and so uh, and this can be gotten on the uh, on the on the uh, copyright.gov website so what happens is when I paste it into this column this one automatically populates itself and then what I do is I copy this and oops and fill up the center one too because you need to have all three and they'll all three read the same amount you could sit there it says title of photograph you could sit there and actually change the title of all of these and uh, actually the the uh, copyright office would love you if you would it's also a heck of a lot of work and you get nothing out of it so I just since they will accept the file names in all three columns I just do the file names in all three columns so this is just up until now has been just the deposit <laughs> and we are done with the deposit yet uh, so this is just the deposit so let's get started with uh, registering a copyright so you will go to copyright.gov and you are going to go to register a copyright and then you are going to go to log into the electronic copyright office registration system and here you are logging in if you see in the bottom here if you are a new user click here to register so you will uh, if this is your first time you will register with all of your information it will be very valuable later on as you will see because they have all of your information it becomes very easy to do the um, uh, the actual application so here I would log it put in my user ID and my password the next screen is you will see registration options register a group of photographs and this is the one that you want for what we are doing unless you are registering only one photograph you would go down to register one work by one author but most all of us are probably going to be registering a whole bunch of photographs so register a group of photographs is the one that uh, the one that we want and so what happens is that um, this is just the opening uh, part of it once I have once I have uh, um, gone in I'm going to start registration so this is the first place I'm going to start is start registration and so this will tell you this application may be used to register a group of published photographs or unpublished photographs and so that's why you can always read all of these little things to find out if there are any extra things that uh, uh, you need so if you see here it says the application form the required fee upload or mail in a copy of your work so that's the deposit so we're going to get started with uh, registering it the first thing that we do is it wants to know type of group and there's a drop down menu and I can select published photographs or unpublished photographs I selected unpublished photographs and then I'm going to check the box here that says that I agree read, I have read understood and meet all eligibility requirements for uh, a uh, group registration and then uh, let's go back we're going to click um, continue up here so the next page it talks about unpublished uh, photographs and then it gives uh, all of the requirements just like I told you all photographs uh, in my case all unpublished and were created by the same author and are owned by the same copyright uh, claimant and the group contains 750 photographs or fewer <laughs> and you're going to uh, submit this uh, list here so uh, 
I think that if you go uh, on here, this is where you can get a, a copy of the, the list, uh, that blank sheet that I, was, that I was talking about earlier. Why they would put it in the middle of a registration, I have no idea, so don't, don't, don't ask me that question. Anyway, so you will see these are all the things that we had uh, already talked about. You may want to know what owned by the same copyright claimant. There are some times when photographers will do something like a work for hire <clears throat> or their employee uh, owns anything that they create, for example. And so you may have created it, uh, but you may not be the one who holds the copyright. So if you're doing a work for hire, pretty much you always know that you're doing that because you've signed a contract that says that it's a work for hire. So uh, this is making the assumption that this is not a work for hire and that's why you can register them here. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting this. You hit continue up here. This next one is, uh, they want to know required uh, if this is, this is a new work. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to hit new right here. Press that new button. And what we will get is it will need, it will ask for the year of completion, 2020, number of photos, you should already know that, 48, and then the name of the, um, the title of the group. What they mean by that is uh, I would suggest that uh, you pick something that is going to be something that you can remember. In most cases, I register my work probably once a quarter or thereabouts. Every once in a while, I will register an individual client. And since I had to register an individual client and I needed to make this video, there you go. That's my individual client that I registered. I don't normally do that. It's just uh, every once in a while, I have to do that. When I have filled this all out, I will press Save. The next screen now is going to show you, this is the title of all of what the work is. And so uh, KHO client is the title of the work being registered, 48 photographs, year of completion, 2020. And then I'm going to press continue. This next one is they want the author's name on it. And ordinarily these would all be blank, they're not, they're not populated. But to make this very easy, um, I just do add me. And because I have an account in here, when I click Add Me, it will populate the appropriate fields. And then I will press Continue. The next one, they want to identify the copyright claimants, which is should be me. And so what I will do would be to go down here and click Add Me, and then press Continue. And this is what it looks like. It will have added all of my information in there. And then when I'm done, I will press Save. And then I get this uh, next one, which will say, uh, if anybody uh, wants to contact me, wants to contact someone to be able to talk about the copyright uh, uh, on the uh, this information, like maybe even the copyright office wants to contact you with a question or something like that. I would click Add Me, it will populate the appropriate fields, and then I will press Continue. This is really difficult, isn't it, right? Add Me, over and over again. We're going to do this again. If the person in the Copyright Office will contact you, wants to contact you if they have any questions about the application, guess what? Add Me, and it populates all of the appropriate fields. And then we're going to hit Continue. Really difficult so far, right? This is the address to which the registration certificate, because you will get a registration certificate, should be mailed. Guess what? Add me. It will fill it out, uh, all the appropriate fields for you, and you will press continue. Now we come into uh, special handling. Now this is a particular case where if there is some particular reason that you need to have special handling to get this uh, registration expedited, this is where you would take care of that. So for example, let's say that you had a, um, uh, a case where um, uh, somebody had infringed on you and you were going to court. You might want to spend the extra money to do this. This is $750, so you have to be darn sure that this is what you uh, want to do. So generally speaking, we don't usually want to do this, and so we will just leave all of it blank, and we'll just press continue. And we get here. And if you've been paying attention, you'll notice on the left-hand side, 
each time I go through any one of the, the uh, pages, it will have a little check mark so that you can keep track of where you are in the process. So here we are. Uh, this is the application must be certified by the author, copyright claimant, or owner of the exclusive rights. So you're going to check that box, put your name in, and put the file name down here. And then you're going to click continue. So in this, this is a page where you would review everything that you're doing. So if you've noticed, then every single one of the um, pages that we've been doing, it has a case number up here. I blurred it out, but there is a case number here, and you need that case number. Uh, but go ahead and review all of these things. I blurred out things like my address and stuff like that, but ordinarily that would be populated by whatever you uh, put in there. And uh, the case number is very important for the deposit section of it. So make sure you remember what the, the case number is. So now that we've reviewed all of this and everything looks fine, we're going to press Add to Cart so that we can pay the government. And so it'll come up again and it will show again what IDs are and all of that kind of stuff and ask, because uh, sometimes if you're going to make uh, multiple um, registrations at the same time, before you pay, you might do a, several of these, what we just did, um, and pay all at once. If you notice, it's $55. Fortunately, they have kept it at $55. So it's $55 for up to 750 images. And we're going to press checkout. And when we press checkout, it's going to take us through all of the menus where you pay with your credit card. And uh, when you're all done and you've paid with your credit card, uh, it's going to come back with this screen and it'll list off all your submissions, right? And then you're just going to press um, continue again. Is this getting boring yet? <laughs> uh, so this is the sheet that you had before, right? That has all of those numbers listed. Now, one of the things that you have to do is that you have to put the case number in there. Remember we said that that was at the top of all of the uh, all of the individual pages, we'll back up just a little bit uh, here. There's case number right there, so you can just copy and paste that, and you will put that right here in the Excel spreadsheet. And then when you and when you name the sheet and save the file, you will call it in my case KHO client case number, and there's the case number. So that way, the uh, copyright office knows that it goes to along with uh, this data file. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take all of those images and that Excel spreadsheet and you are going to zip them all because the Copyright Office does not want to have huge files. So you'll notice that every single one of my images has been saved as a JPEG. The Excel spreadsheet is saved as an Excel spreadsheet and I will have a, a zip file when, I have done, when I'm done compressing everything. Then I have to upload the deposit. So this is the screen that you are going to get. And you see it has a case number there again. And I am going to, once I am sure that uh, my zipped file has the uh, smaller images, copies of every single one, and it has a copy of the Excel spreadsheet uh, that's exactly as they required with the, the yellow band up there at the top. And I would select the files to upload. It would be the zipped file. Um, that uh, has the images and has the Excel spreadsheet in it and then press start upload and it will start uploading them and when it's all done it will say successfully uploaded and it will give the file name that I had there but that's not all now you have to click this particular box uh, here to um, uh, say that your submission is complete after you've uploaded all of it. And if, if at any point that you have said that you want uh, confirmation on everything, you'll get an email that gives you confirmation that, that everything is just fine. Uh, so after you've clicked that it's done, then here you have the uh, your submission is complete, no further action is required. And what you will see is back at the beginning, you'll, you, you can see when you first log in a list of all of the case files that are in progress. Now know that it's probably going to be at least three months before you get the copyright registration uh, receipt, the actual um, 
paper that says that you have registered them. It's a really boring sheet of paper, but you better hang on to it. Uh, rather than going back to the copyright office to try to remember what you um, registered, it's much easier if you have a box with those registration sheets and keep copies of all these file, all these zip files that you've you've created, so that you can easily go back and see what was registered and what wasn't registered. So there's never any question about whether you registered or not. Yes, you can go to the copyright office and look that all up. You don't want to go to that much trouble. Just save copies yourself, and it will make it uh, much easier. So here's at the beginning when you first log in. See, I've got two open cases here, and so uh, it will always list what the open cases is. And don't be like I said, this was back in in June. Uh, don't be surprised if you see it open for a while because, like I said, it's about three months before you finally get a copy from the uh, copyright office. Again, I will put this up again so to uh, to make it uh, helpful for you. Again, uh, copyright.gov for everything copyright from the government. Uh, the second one is a, uh, a help page to help you with answering any questions. Third one is a video that's very similar to what I just uh, did for you, except that uh, they go into more detail about the pages and they don't talk at all about um, the, uh, the deposit. So uh, hopefully that is helpful to all of you. Uh, it does really make a difference. Um, if you register your work, you have many more rights than you would if you didn't register your work. I just have it as part of my workflow. Um, I'm always, I will do um, previews for my clients when I do my in-person sales. I have my, the previews that I've already created for them to, to see and make their selections. I just take that preview file and I will dump it in a copyright file and after the, you know, once a quarter or every couple of months or something like that, I will have the entire list of all of the previews that I had done for clients and that's what I use uh, as my deposit. I resize all of those, I get the list of the file names, and I submit the whole thing to the Copyright Office. So I hope that this has been helpful to you and hopefully not too intimidating because once you get used to the routine it's actually not too bad. <laughs> so good luck and I hope you all start registering your work.